congratulations on all the success from this film. I'm curious, what does it feel like having, you know, being kind of a newfound breakout star in America from this film? What's been weird or silly about this new change in your life? What does it all feel like? Um, I think it's great. And probably the most important thing for from everything that I'm feeling right now is that I can see that people have been ready for these questions that we're asking in the movie. And they're ready to stand up against misogyny. And they're ready to treat each other with more love and respect and equality. And there is some beautiful messages about feminism, um, how women should not be subjugated by the patriarchy, how women should be equal how women should have made own decisions and should not like make themselves look in a certain way because of men so i'm happy and yeah it's great i can say that my life is amazing right now because i also because of my fellow bulgarians that um a lot of eastern europeans has been texted me that their hopes has never been stronger that actually things like that are possible for coming from a small country in Eastern Europe and going to like huge Hollywood movie because usually there is no representation for Eastern Europeans or if there is some most of the time it's going to be for like if you, they're going to be the villains and now we have Tuta who, which is a multi multi layered character and it's it's I'm happy. That's excellent. Um... Speaking of your hometown of Bulgaria, you're a classically trained actor. You've studied at academies in Bulgaria. And I'm curious if any part of shooting this Borat film, especially kind of the improvised moments of the film, uh, reminded you of training. If there were any kind of acting exercises or anything you learned from those experiences that helped you while shooting this film. It, uh, it was like a training because I'm trained as a theater actress, usually. I mean, not usually, uh, like for real, um, 12 years, maybe. It's been 12 years since I started. But I've never been doing impro. Uh, and most of the scenes in the movie are improvised because we're with real people. Yeah, we have goals that are following the script and the story, but you're there with some real people and you have no idea how they're gonna react. You might think that they're gonna start laughing or they're gonna be mad and they're gonna yell at you, but sometimes they're reacting in a way that you can never imagine that they're gonna do it. So probably that teach me how to be flexible in the situation and how to change more. Uh, and of course, all of that because of Sasha, because he was like my mentor and my teacher, like exactly, guardian angel if that's the way to say it yeah and can you walk me through the process of first meeting Sasha Baron Cohen auditioning for this role testing for it what was it like to first get involved uh, the first time when I met him it was in England uh, for camera tests because I believe that they've been searching for an actor who is not recognizable to be an actor because we're spending like hours with these people uh, and the worst thing is that if they realize that this is a joke, this is a script thing. So we had to make them believe that these people actually exist, um, no matter that they're over the top, like they're quite crazier than usual. Uh, so I went there in June 2019 uh, for the first audition and he just walked me through how I should keep believing the character. I should be focused on what I'm saying. I should be serious because there is, a, I don't think there is a big difference between comedy and drama because probably the difference is between, about the script and about the problems that you're uh, looking at because in the drama things, the problems are actually really hard and tough. Well, in the comedy, they're smaller, but you have to like, you have to experience them as they're something huge. So Sasha helped me how to stay in the moment, be in the character, um, believe in what I'm saying and concentrate maybe because it's, it's more of a discipline. I don't know, it's weird, but it is. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and what did some of these screen tests you filmed in England consist of? What did you do in them? I haven't seen them. I don't know how they look like, what is it? Um, but so we went there, we were together for the first test. There, there, is an, there was another one where we had to try the most traumatic scene in the movie when it's like the breakup between Tuta and Borat. 
uh, that was the second one, and I believe so, that the third one was when I was alone and they wanted to test me if I'm alone in a room or in a place with some people. That's pre-COVID, when COVID wasn't happened. So that's why we were, I said in a room. Um, if I'm alone, am I gonna handle the scene by myself? Because when Sasha is there, he's gonna save it forever. Uh, but uh, so, and I remember that um, some of them advised me, don't be like clean, don't like prepare yourself to look pretty or to be glam or something. Try to not take shower. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I'm ready for it, but I'm in the middle of another production. So it's gonna be devastating for it the rest of the crew in, in in the movie that I'm shooting. So I made it something super smelly, stinky, with Valeriana pills, um, old eggs, vinegar, old olive oil, onions, and I mixed it and it was probably the worst smell that you can ever imagine. And I put it all over me and I started like hugging and touching people for bye. And they were like, okay, this is not an actor for sure. So that was probably the last audition that I went and it was, yeah, it was maybe two weeks before I came to America and we started shooting the, this crazy, beautiful world cluster. Yeah, that is so funny. Um, let's talk about how you approached the character of Tutar. What I found so interesting about your performance is that we see kind of different versions of her. There's a version of her in Kazakhstan, then the version of her kind of remaking herself in America. Did you approach her as different people or was she one person going on an arc what, what was it like kind of working on her interior life so uh thank you so much for this question um to be honest i try to to focus on who is actually tuta because Borat it is established character so tuta being his daughter should be somebody similar crazy as him quite less educated even than him and more primitive if that's the way to say it and she is believing in things that are not right but her intuition and her how said her her intelligent in biologically somehow is maybe faster a little bit because as example in the beginning of the movie uh, when today speaking in Kazakh even when I'm speaking in Bulgarian I'm speaking with some sounds some letters that sounds more like Romani because in Bulgaria we have a uh, small society, but we have them, and it's uh, and I it was influenced by speaking more with like ha and ah. So wh even when she's speaking in Bulgarian, she's like ha tate tate. Well, in the end of the movie, if she wanna say tate, it ah tate tate tate, and it's somehow softer. I mean, at, at least I try to do it. Same as with the English, because at the beginning it's like how many other girls are gonna live in hell with me? Well. I hope so. Um, by the end of the movie, she's more like, no, I'm not doing it because I'm beautiful as I am. And her, I don't know, but at least I was thinking that, well, she's uh, following this path and when she's here, when she is seeing with her own eyes, how actually is probably the right version of people to treat each other. And especially when she meets her godmother, if I'm able to say that, um, Janice Jones, she, she, is having, how to say, not catharsis. Maybe, yeah, maybe she is having a catharsis with the breakup with her father because she is seeing that most of the things that he's been telling her are lies. So she is going from here and starting to envelop herself. So it is one person, but it's one person who is changing really fast in a good way, if that's the way to say it, to the moment when she's able to make her own decisions, but she is deciding to support her father and maybe because he's finally showing his love that he is going to be there for him and she don't need to live here the proper life she preferred to go with him and save him because that's isn't that the most important to love and to be loved maybe i don't know i think you phrased it exactly correct um speaking of janice jones um what was it like when you realized in your first interaction with her that she was going to be such a positive, kind force for you and not necessarily a meaner or more intolerant person like some of the people maybe you were interacting with? Um, uh, you know what? I watched the movie like 
three, four days ago, uh, two, three months after the release. And I was waiting for the scene. And from the very, very beginning, when we're entering this house, she is like, what is happening? And I remember that when I saw her for the first moment and I was like, okay, this is going to be great because we need people like her. We need examples like her. We need help mentors. We need idols. We need people to be like, to be like her because she is the perfect example of how, how important it is to be supportive, how important it is to give another chance to people, no matter if they're crazy if they're sometimes rude maybe they're less educated so help them to go there and to be kind to be nice to be i don't know to love so i knew that this is important and i was happy of course i was sad because i think until the last day uh right before we released the movie she's been probably still worried about this person because she she is an angel she has this huge heart full of love and maybe that's that was what I was nervous because in the movie we will all see her real self we will always see people's true colors so there's nothing to be worried and something good actually but I was worried that because she is incredible she's been probably worried about Tuta because we shot with her a few months later from the first scene and she still remembered that girl and because I wasn't there and I was crying that, can I go and see her? Can I go and hug her? Can we go and at least after we shot? And I was, and they were like, no, there are people called field team. You stay in your place. And I was like, okay, I can wait. I can wait. And I was waiting and yeah. I mean, for me as Maria is also important that I met in my real life, a perfect example of um, how somebody that never heard about you, somebody that hasn't been around you help somebody to build his her personality and um going through life with her and like ready to i'm sorry yeah it's just for me what's important because because of her now i'm trying to be a better person i'm trying to support people more because that's love and kindness and support maybe that's beautiful um Shifting gears kind of dramatically, I know you've talked about it a few times, the Rudy Giuliani of it all. That scene is so intense to watch. It's so scary to watch. How did it feel planning it, going through with it, going into that bedroom with him? Did you ever feel unsafe? What was it like? Um, so I was preparing myself from the very beginning because I had a call with Monica Levinson, the amazing producer that we've been working with, with Anthony Hines, the head of the writing, um, and Sasha's long-term partner, um, Sasha and Jason Wooliner, the director of the movie, that probably there is going to be a moment when you have to meet somebody important, somebody that is going to be in high position, so are you going to be ready to do it? And I was like, oh, sure, yeah, let's do it. Uh, it's going to be cool. It's going to be adrenalizing uh so but i didn't actually probably realize that it's going to be that important because i'm not american i'm not into american politics so i knew his name and i knew who he was because of uh, the terrible date of 9 11 but i prepared myself to be like his biggest fan um knowing every single detail of uh, his biography and like a friend of mine was reading stories about him and everything about him until the moment when I was falling asleep the night before the day of shooting. So of course I was freaking out, um, probably more because I knew that this is an important scene for the movie. And for me as an actor, I have to do it and I have a duty and I have to go through whatever it takes because it is in the script. Um, we had some incredible footage of other things. So that was the most important things to be done. And I remember that my heart was racing. I was barely, breathing like this but i was like okay relax we were gonna get through this and sasha was there and i know that if something is about to happen he will sacrifice himself and he will save me he will save the production he will save the movie he will save the world i think that's sasha's idea because all he's doing is basically saving the world through art 
Yeah, and speaking of saving the world through art, uh, as of days ago, we've recently seen Donald Trump get impeached again. We've seen Rudy Giuliani is no longer a lawyer. He's been disbarred. Do you think that this movie and your involvement with it has changed the world or has helped these big shifts happen? I don't know about that. I think Sasha is probably more familiar because... I haven't been living in America for such a long time. I've been here only for like two years. So I cannot say, I mean, we have different examples in the movie and people are different. Unfortunately, we haven't get there united as much as possible that I want to be. But I'm happy that because I remember at, uh, November 6th or 7th, um, when, was, when they re revealed it, because I was living here in LA and I saw with my own eyes how people were literally celebrating and they were all together um, laughing, smiling, dancing, singing on the streets during COVID with, with masks. And for me, it was actually really impressive and inspiring to see um, Kamala Harris, uh, the vice president, who who I remember at the, at the night when they um, elected her, I remember her speech and I was crying and I was like, okay, memorize this because this is the most powerful, important, beautiful thing that you've ever heard. How I may be the first one, but I'm not gonna be the last. And again, about the quality, about feminism, about how we are all human, we are all equal. We should not be subjugated by our gender, ethnic background, race, religion, sexual um, uh, sexuality anything just we are all human and we are here to to support and love each other that's beautiful um speaking of messages of feminism of anti-misogyny anti-patriarchy did you feel that those messages were in the original plans or script for borat 2 or was that something you brought to it was that a conversation you had with sasha how did you contribute to that i think that has been from the beginning of the moment when they've been creating the script because the whole team that we've been working on uh i can call every single down every single one of them uh by their names and i can stand behind my uh words that i feel them like a family and they were all people that are inspiring that are there to stand up against misogyny and stand up against uh women being subjugated by the patriarchy because unfortunately it's crazy but we are living in 2021 and there are still places around the world there are still people that are believing that women are like somehow i don't know and not equal which is crazy so i believe that that has been one of the messages in the movie sasha probably has a better answer but from the first script that i read it is was there it was there and sasha actually this is a funny story that I haven't mentioned it. Sasha, uh, Sasha, uh, two thirds and point was about to become like extremely pro LGBTQ activist feminist. That was the reason why I cut my hair, but their COVID happened. Um, they were thinking even more. The script was evolving every single day and we left that line. Uh, so it is being there from the very first time the the feminism and the equality part, I believe so. But I'm not a writer for, for this movie, so I'm not sure that what I'm thinking is exactly the truth. I can say only what I read. So, yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Um, so that sounds like you had a plan for this character that had to be shelved or deleted. Were there any other deleted scenes that you loved shooting that you were sad to see go that you, you wish could have made the cut? Uh, we were talking about that, like, few days ago that last year, this time last year, we were in another protest, Richmond, I believe so. And it was like a big rally again. And we were so scared that something might happen because it was huge protest and it was important scene. And Sasha was in the middle of all of this craziness. Uh, also, probably I was, I'm a little bit um, sentimental about that, but we had some super cute and funny scene uh, at one dentist. Uh, place where it was more of a physical comedy and that was probably the moment when I was like okay just look at Sasha and try to be like him because 
it, it was cool and it was funny. And I mean, a lot of scenes has been deleted, uh, but I think we have probably the best version of the movie. And maybe I'm subjective, but I love it. <laughs> I love it too. Um, you you mentioned so the the kind of broad, silly, physical comedy of this, which is so funny, just universal language. I'm I was so curious watching this. Did you have a plan of what to do if either you or Sasha started laughing, if you started breaking? Did that happen during any scene that you had to like scrap because you couldn't make it through? So I was thinking about that actually because especially in the beginning. I mean, Jesus Christ, Sasha is probably one of the funniest people that I've met in my entire life. But he is one of the smartest and the most concentrated people, extremely disciplined. So even if he's saying something ridiculous, he has this, the, I don't know, the, the, the stonest face ever. And you you just like, yeah, he is there. He is this person. And I remember a few scenes when he's been repeating some crazy things. I couldn't stop laughing. And, and after we finished the scene, he was like, this is not in the script, why are you laughing? He was like, I just couldn't do it. I mean, it's it's so funny. So I, I was asking him, what should I do? And he was like, oh, and started like exactly teaching me and mentoring me how I should go deep inside the character, uh, in which way I should look, how should I? Because I'm thinking more that the more you're like doing saying these crazy things and you're sitting in a calm position it's harder to stay uh calm just to, to keep straight face rather than when you're busy with something physically as example like the david and dance because we we're doing this craziness but we are dancing and our bodies are already involved with the action i don't think about that it's funny that is ridiculous and that is crazy uh but when i'm as example in front of all of this uh, no, it's not the women. It's not exactly the same. But when I'm at the, um, the pregnancy crisis center, and when I'm sitting there, and when Sasha is repeating, "Can we take it out now, please?" And you're seeing the person looking at us, and there's some awkward silence, and you just want to laugh so hard, but you can't. And I, I don't know. Maybe I was thinking about something else, pressing something, putting pressure over some place on my body um but maybe that 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 was something about that that makes a lot of sense um i have one final question for you and then we'll let you go uh what does the future look like for you is there another collaboration with sasha do you have any other kind of roles coming up or anything you're particularly excited about i'm excited COVID to be over first yeah. of all uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's more because Everywhere around the world now, we have to handle this craziness first. Um, I'm reading a lot of scripts and I'm having great meetings and I'm not sure what I'm doing next, but I'm ready for it because I want to work all the time. Um, but it's going to be interesting. Of course, someday I would love to work with Sasha in anything because he is, he is everything. He is my teacher. He is my mentor. He is my... I don't know, every, absolutely everything. And yeah, we will see how the things are gonna go. Yes, we will. I imagine your future is gonna look really bright. Uh, thanks so much for your time. It was great chatting with you. Thank you so much.